Stand-up paddleboarding is becoming more and more popular in the United States. And today I get to hang loose with one of the nation's top artisans. And every single board he makes is a piece of art. Deerfield Beach, Florida is a town that loves its water. And here, paddleboarders have plenty of places to get their ride on. It's more like a vessel without a motor, just like a canoe, or maybe just taking a stroll on a bike. You're just gonna use a waterway instead. Heath Vanden Bogart is a one-man band who builds high-quality, custom-made paddleboards. He lets each client design their own board, from state seals to custom colors. I create a board for someone that loves the product that they designed. Sort of me taking my artwork and saying, what do you want? And designing it to exactly what they look for in a paddleboard. Heath started building his own boards in his 20s, but a job repairing surfboards at age 12 is what got him going. I decided that if somebody's gonna repair these things, I wanna start repairing them. And repairing went into wanting to build them. What makes Bogart boards better than others? And they're literally made like by his hand. So he makes sure there's no imperfections, they're lightweight, user friendly, but they're very strong, durable, and they last a long time. You gotta try it. I've actually never seen a paddle board up close before. This is the first time. But it's so big. I mean, I don't even know how a person like me could lift this up and take it into the water. All paddle boards have a, a center of gravity. That's where they usually put the handles. So okay. under the board, if you put both your hands like this, but underneath the board, okay. I'll help you lift it up and you can see how light it is. I can't lift this. <laughs> I'm lifting it all yeah. the way? Yep. I'm lifting it. I'm lifting this whole board. It's, it's very, and it's very light. light. Most of our 10 footers weigh about 17 pounds when they're completely finish. Each board starts out the same way, as a giant block of foam that is cut to size by a hot wire. From there, a sculpting machine gives it its signature shape. Now, from here on out, it's all by hand? All by hand. And the room we're in, we call this a shaping room. And with the lights that are on both sides of this room, mm -hmm. it allows us to see the texture of the board. So I'm going to turn off yeah. our headlight so that we can actually see these lines perfectly. OK. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, so now you can see the lines on the board. See all the shadows, yeah. And it tells us our highs and lows on the board. And we're going to go ahead and shape all those lines out. And I'm not pushing, right? Not too hard, no. There you go. And the 220 will smooth it right out to almost nothing. Oh, wow. Everything he does on this board is done twice. Once for the bottom and once for the top. All right, she looks good. Now time to spackle. He thins out traditional wall spackle to almost a milkshake consistency. The spackle seals all of the imperfections and holes. And make no mistakes, there is an art form to this process. When you're shaping a board, everything's supposed to flow like water. So when you're doing paddle boards and surfboard, everything starts from the center of the board to the nose of the board at all times. Once the spackle dries, it's sanded until smooth. One of the things that sets Heath apart from other board makers is the custom graphics that his clients get to choose. I wanted to give you this little remote, and then if you hold it up underneath the front, I can show you what it does. Just push the on button. All right. It's like a TV remote here. Lights! You put lights on this? Yeah, we try to install the lights on the board for some of those moonlight paddles. We're looking at the underside of the board. And at nighttime, when you're out on the water, I bet this is gorgeous. Yeah. Totally original. Before graphics can go down on the board, it has to be taped off. And while Heath makes it look easy, it's really not. Do the curve, and then right back down the edge of the board. Oh. Perfect. Now That stand was it. not perfect, and you know it. He's being nice. <laughs> now we're going to put our print on. This is the print I brought for you today. I love it. Look. Just some Very hibiscus. Hawaiian, huh? The graphics are printed from the computer onto rice paper, which is then laid over the board and adhered with glue. We want to try to keep the spray glue at a mist. We don't want it to land on the board because it actually will eat into the board. So we just want to mist the board. OK. As we lay down our cloth, so we're going to start from one end and go to the other end. So you're going to start from there and pull towards your, your side. Push down the middle first and then work your yeah. Perfect. Razor blades cut off the excess rice paper. Not 
There it is. And then there's a little bit up here. Look how pretty. Next, fiberglass cloth is laid on top of the paper. This is what makes our, our board super, super light. We use a, a six and a four ounce. So this is a fabric that you put on foam. Right. Huh? <laughs> Combination of our fiberglass with our resin makes it super strong. Some boards need additional strength. Heath uses even tougher fabric to cover those boards. We have this kind of fabric and this one. They're two different weaves. It's the only reason why they look different. They're the exact same thing. It's just one has more polypropylene, which it is a plastic or a PVC woven into the carbon, and it makes it super strong. Heath, where do you get all of your materials? I can't tell you that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> No, You're gonna not. tell me? No, no, I'm getting no secrets here. I'm getting no secrets. All it's right. Made in America, that's all we can made say. Made in America. That's awesome. That's what we like to hear. The Hawaiian board needs only the clear fiberglass, which is rolled over the set graphic. Then a resin that is mixed equally with a hardener is poured over the cloth. Whoa. When you pour it out, you're gonna scoop it back in the bucket and scrape. Scoop, scrape. Scoop, scrape. The resin will harden in about 20 minutes. So when Heath says scoop and scrape, he means it. We have 20 minutes, people. Roughly 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that's it. Scoop, scrape. Scoop, scrape. Bye. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, now we have to speed up a little bit. Ugh, this is nerve wracking. 19 minutes later, our resin is perfectly applied. But now we have to repeat the whole process for the top of the board. Back on the underside, Heath routes out holes for the prefabricated boxes that will hold the fins. He puts resin inside each one so the boxes will adhere when they're set inside. A thickening paste is set on top and the hardener locks it all down. When it's dry, Heath sands the boxes open and the fins go in. Last step, adding styrofoam deck pads to keep riders from slipping. The price tag for all this? about $1,300. I love doing it. Just being on the water, there's just so much more out there and so many more places you can go to on a paddleboard than you can go with most other things. This is fun. I think I'm better at riding these things than making them. Living the dream, people. Living the dream.